Heather Adler. And I'm Ben Carozza. And you're watching Detox on Dose.ca. Stay tuned because we've got the Emmy nominations. We're taking a look at the top 10 cross-dressing films of all time. So movies this week, obviously the big one opening is Hairspray. Now this one features John Travolta as a fat, fat lady and of course breakout star Nikki Blonsky. Yeah, uh, John Travolta as a fat lady, there's like no time for all the jokes we could possibly do with that one. That's right. So instead, we're just going to move right along. We are taking a look at the top 10 cross-dressing roles of all time. Surprisingly, difficult to narrow down to 10. Yeah, I guess there's like a ton out there. Yeah, yeah. One of the movies on our list is Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Yeah, now this one follows the exploits of a lady sir who undergoes a sex change operation, it's a little bit botched, she's ended up with like an inch left and um, marries a Berlin soldier and then they break up and she starts a rock band to basically fume about all of her, uh, her strife life. Probably not the only transsexual rock epic, but it's probably the best. Yeah, I'd say you could pretty much give it the cake for that one. And of course, also making the list was Rocky Horror's Picture Show. Yeah, it's the classic. I mean, everybody's seen this movie, and it's probably the top transsexual, transvestite film out there. Yeah, for sure. It follows two people whose car breaks down. They end up in a castle filled with wacky, crazy, singing and dancing transvestites, and sometimes toast is thrown. <laughs> How'd you do, I? See, you've met my faithful handyman. And another weird sort of entry on the top ten is Psycho. Yeah, that's right. Now, this one you probably wouldn't think of as a cross-dressing movie, but of course, Norman Bates dresses up like his mom and kills people. That's some serious mommy issues. Maybe not the most flattering portrayal of transvestites, but... <laughs> but still, nonetheless, very, very popular one. So check out all the movies that made our list at dose.ca slash movies. <laughs> The Emmy Awards came out on Thursday and some shocking, some upsets, some people left out. And uh, of course the dominance of The Sopranos in their final season. Yeah, that's right. They actually got 15 nominations, probably well deserved. But you know what wasn't well deserved? The five nominations that two and a half men got. That was a little strange. A little. Considering like Charlie Sheen's one of the people. I know, Charlie Sheen, like just it never fails. The mom love that is shown to this man. But like you were saying before, it was in Everyone Loves Raymond's old time slot. So maybe it's just that's where the crappy comedy goes and people are just robotically trained. Must It's pretty watch. bad. It's pretty bad. If girls with big boobs work at Hooters, where do girls with only one leg work at? <laughs> I hop. <laughs> Another weird one was that Kiefer Sutherland got nominated for 24 again. Now, yeah. I don't have a problem with him usually, but last season really stunk. Yeah, yeah, and Lost actually, they got shut out, but that wasn't surprising because it was also really stinky. Except for the last episode, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So check out a full list of nominees at dose.ca slash TV and find out who's up for this year's Emmy Awards. <laughs> So music this week, I sat down with metric front woman Emily Haynes. We talked about her brand new solo album, What is Free to a Good Home, which was partly inspired by her father's death and his previous poems, which he's also releasing in a brand new book. We chatted a little bit about her father and how he influenced yeah. her writing. Well, when you were going through and I mean, spending so much time obviously looking at your father's things, did you, do you think you learned something while you were actually putting this together, having all of this stuff you know, laid out in front of you? Yeah, well it was like getting to hang out with him again and have a conversation again. Because yeah. that's definitely been the main thing and why I think as an artist, if I can say that, you know, creatively, um, since he died, it's been such a, a theme for me is because, I, you know, I didn't even realize it, what I had when I was growing up. And then when it was gone, you know, my, all my creative life was kind of around this conversation I was having with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then his half of the conversation ended. To find out what the future of Metric holds, they're also working on a new album. And read the whole story with Emily Haynes at dose.ca slash music.